Hello, and welcome back to Satisfactory Outpost in the Desert. Uh, we're in the hub here, in our transit uh, depot, storage depot. And uh, just going to take a quick look at what I've done between episodes. This is really minor. I just put up some walls uh, around our, an equipment shed with a few storage boxes to hold things like, you know, spare sets of... Blade Runners or spare Xenobashers. Uh, you could put all. You could also put um, canisters of fuel or jetpacks in there, either for people joining you in, in multiplayer games or just to have nearby in case you die really far away from your base. You can you know re-equip and go back out to recover your goods. Then over on this side, it's just uh, the Mam and the Fix It coupon shop. I really wanted to have a um, one of the awesome sinks in here, but it's so tall that not even like this, you know, five foundation, what is that, five times four, 20, 20 meters high, it's taller than 20 meters high, it just won't fit. So, no room for it. Over here, um, I went ahead and uh, ex expanded my hypertubes all the way into the center. Originally I thought I'd have them going around the outside of this platform, but <laughs> the storage shop is so big that if you have the hypertubes on the outside, that's still quite a bit of running. So I, um, I just routed them all to the center. They actually, and I, you know, I thought I could have the tubes running across the floor, but they need to be hopping over tubes. So what I did was I routed them to the, the storage depot and then they go underneath the storage depot and come back here. And something that I, I learned is that you can actually use um, these cool, uh, what are they called? Frameworks? Foundation frames. And you can weave the, the hypertubes in them. No collision uh, if, if, you're, if you're careful. And so it looks really cool where they just come up from the, from the bottom uh, through the frameworks and then out here. Let's replace that window. And you can tell that I uh, had a lot of fun with the color gun. I basically used up all of, nearly all of my uh, supply of paint from, from flower petals. But that was, that was necessary because um, I needed a way to you know, let me know which of these hypertubes connects to which outposts. So um, I did it by color. It's, some of it is um, intuitive. Some of it's it's not. Like this is this is uh, the yellow one. This is gonna head out toward the um, compacted coal slash battery outpost. I made it yellow because uh, sulfur is the primary component there. This light blue is iron. It's you know there are most a lot of components that are gray or or grayish and so I had to go with like a gray blue for this orange this is copper I've got the green accents here because you know copper is also like a green colored uh, this is it's just the same white as everything else this is for the limestone outpost this golden colored one that's kind of like a white gold this will be to the Caterium slash electronics outpost purple is heading to the Heavy frames outpost. Obviously, heavy frames aren't purple, but black was already taken over here for the steel outpost. Pink will lead to the crystal outpost once that's uh, up and running. And then I, I made the oil outpost blue for plastic. Plastic's blue. Alright, so before we leave the transit hub, we've got a lot to do this, this episode. Uh, let's go up. And we need to set up a second receiving train. This is going to be, I assume that this is the locomotive, yeah. We're going to name this uh, receiving B. We don't need to um, assign any stations yet, but we will rename the station to the receiving B station. 
Okay. Uh, this this train will be used in collecting the heavy frames that we manufacture in the heavy frame outpost. It's also going to be used for uh, collecting our products from the copper outpost and the the oil fields. Now let's go up to the third floor, our shipping floor. Uh, I've just routed the the belts from our storage containers over to um, this shipping A platform. And uh, had to use a slightly different method for the shipping because the um, the order of components in these freight platforms is is not going to be the same as the order below. Not every component that we picked up from our receiving A station needs to be shipped out. Some of it's just going to remain here in the center transit hub. So um, fortunately, the spacing here worked out perfectly, where if you uh, correctly line up your splitters with the, the inputs, the, the conveyor lifts will connect the splitter to the input without any belts needed. It'll just snap right on. So right now we've got, um, in the first the first car of this train will be modular frames, and then I believe it's concrete, and in case industrial frames, steel pipes, car 5 is empty, 6 is empty, car 7 is steel beams, those are the beams that are going to the limestone outpost for encased industrial beams, and car 8 is empty. So uh, this is, right now it's still running the simple loop of, you know, um, being filled with steel beams here in the outpost, traveling to the limestone factory to unload those, and then making it its way back. But we're going to um, add a few, sh a f one stop to that right now, as we head to the heavy frame outpost. We'll take the purple pipe. Looks like there's clipping. That's just because the camera is actually like a few feet above, above the actual player. The pipes themselves do not clip. <laughs> I like that there's like just parrots chilling on the foundations. All right. What's in these boxes? So, I've, I've mostly got these set up. I'm going to finish connecting the, the last manufacturer now, just so uh, you can see how it's done. You notice these are all completely straight. They're all really uniform, and that's because of this method that I devised here to, um, to do it cleanly. We need splitters. What we need to do is we need to line these splitters up with uh, with our stacks of conveyor poles and also with the inputs with the manufacturers. Once you have the first one down. The others are just, you know, directly next to it, completely adjacent. And I need to go up. There, are, there are four inputs, but the uh, ground level splitter is not used. That's that's if you had a belt right on the ground. So we'll go up five, or I guess four more, excluding the ground level. And then we go up three, two, and one. Now we can deconstruct all of these, leaving the top layer. And then we just belt it out. You don't need to collect 
or connect these, you know, the these belts on the end. You could just leave it hanging, but I think it's better to connect them and have it look supported. Even though, you know, apparently gravity is not a thing in this game. And then because we aligned the splitters on the ground where there's a grid, there could, we know that these belts are completely uh, aligned with the inputs. All of the recipes are set. They're all powered off of a single Mark II power pole. The outputs are set. So the inputs will be coming from the north side and it's going to be outputting the heavy modular frames to the south side. We, we did it that way so that um, both the inputs and the outputs could be between the two train stations, one, re one receiving station, one shipping station. Let's head up to the roof. All right, so this is our receiving station on the right. Uh, I think this is, okay, we need to connect this station. This will be, oh, we're just using the, the first four cars. And as we saw in the, in the storage hub, you know, this is like, uh, this will be modular frames, concrete, encased industrial beams, and steel pipes. And then I just did the standard take the belt, uh, you know, put it on the conveyor pole, move it up, and repeat. So this will go on the lowest rung. Let's make sure these are all set to unload. They are. Uh, it sh they sh it, this should be powered. I've already named it, right? Yeah, incoming. So now we can just add this as a stop to our shipping A train. Shipping A, then we're going to add a stop, and this stop is going to be heavy frames incoming. While we wait on that train to arrive, we can set up our outgoing here. I actually think we, we can... We've got the room to do this a little bit better. In the, this, we've got the space on this platform. One, two. Perfect. So we'll just run this belt over to here. The floor is it's not too steep. Oh, I bet this conveyor belt's going the wrong way. So let's fix that and bear lift. Oh, no. The conveyor lift was right. These belts are wrong. Are they wrong? Yeah. This needs to go into the, uh, the input slot, not the output. Let's see if we're unloading all four cars. Good. These belts should fill up. I think they did a great job with the train stations. I really like the way that the, the automation works. 
All right, we've got pipes, encased beams, concrete, and modular frames, the four components for heavy modular frames. There we go. Now let's add that conveyor lift back. And we'll just wait around for our first heavy modular frame to be produced. Can we see the LEDs from up here? Are they green? Yeah, there's one. Green. Good. Should be any time now. There it is. Producing three at a time with this recipe. All right, so those should start filling up. Gotta auto save. The first car, yeah, the first car on our second receiving train. Let's receiving B. So let's go ahead and set that up. Receiving B. First stop is going to be heavy frames outgoing, and then back to receiving B. Turn on autopilot. Now I haven't tested these tracks, so I'm hopefully it works. Sometimes when you're connecting the tracks, it, it, you think that you've you've snapped the tracks correctly, and then that's actually not the case. Okay, I think this is our train. It's empty. All right. So we've only got a, a few heavy frames so far. But they should be loaded onto the train. And then they'll be taken back to the shipping depot. Okay, so we need to continue preparing for our next outpost, the electronics outpost. And that's going to need supplies from both the, the oil fields in the form of plastic and probably rubber as well, and um, from the copper outpost. So we need to connect those outposts to our central storage hub. Uh, I guess we can do copper first. So let's run over to the copper hyper tube. Super close. And see I use the foundation frames uh, extensively underneath the the transit hub to provide support for the hypertubes. I'm not crazy about having to have foundations like run the length under the, the hypertubes. I wish that you could have um, just like super long hypertube support stands or something. You know, like a, a pillar version for hypertubes. I think that'd be more ideal. Alright, copper outpost. Let's go to the roof. 
Actually, I guess we need to stop here because um, we need to to route these these goods all to the roof here. What have we got? It's been a while since I've been over here. Let's refresh my memory a little bit. We've got cables, wire, and then here we've got ingots. Those ingots are, will be shipped too. This we can remove. These this was was used when we were using um when we were using our vehicles, our explorers to transport. So we can remove these lifts. Yeah, my inventory's full. That's not good. Let's put a storage box. Make some space. Can I? Okay, I can. Good. You can actually land on uh, the floating storage boxes. Okay. So these. You can struck all of that. Okay. So I know this is copper sheets. And I assume that I had two windows here because... Well, I'm honestly not sure why. I know some of these I had two windows because uh, if they have two belts going in, they need two belts going out to make... Uh, to get the, the full benefit of of the um, all of the constructors and smelters that are going into this. So I guess what we need to do is we need to get some walls up here. try to make this work. So we need to get this lower output also up here, but we're going to have to use a conveyor lift to do it. But if I start the conveyor lift from this window, it's going to be oriented the wrong way. So we need to, to place the conveyor lift first to establish the direction uh, that these belts are going to go. these down to give me some perspective here so I can see what I'm doing. So we can just go ahead and we'll add belts at all of these locations. Uh, this was a single window. That was through the hot bar for now. belts.
don't know why I needed so many. But, you know, I set this up a few weeks ago, so we'll try to figure it out. Oh, I see. It's because of the huge amount of wire. This would actually be... this would actually need five cars to handle uh, total production. We'll need one car for copper sheets. Uh, both of these belts of wire can feed one car that's fine. There are two inputs on the freight platform. We'll need two inputs for this. Uh, we've got two lanes of copper ingots, so that's another station. And then we've got uh, just one belt of, of cable, right? Yeah. So one car, two, three for ingots, four for more wire, and five for uh, sheets. Okay. So let's make a note here that we need five cars collecting from uh, the copper outpost. So now that we've got the conveyor lifts uh, set, the orientation set, we can try to place... Yeah, there we go. Uh, of course. This was the problem. Hmm. That's not going to work either. The issue is these are so close. We can try this, but you know, I'm not confident this is going to work, but we'll try it. Let's put another window here. It's not going to make any difference. <laughs> I don't know why I thought that'd be better. Hmm. What to do? What to do? I wonder. The single window. The single window works. Okay. But here's the issue, right? Uh, we would need another single window here. So even though it seems like this should work, you, have, you think ahead to the conveyor lifts, and you can't have two conveyor lifts on the same uh, same section. Yeah, they're just gonna completely cover each other. Okay. So I, I think the only solution here is to create more space. Uh, the easiest thing to do is going to be to push these storage containers back. Like even one foundation's width should give us the space we need. Let, let's test that. Let's connect this. Okay. You know, it would also help to... Well, I guess it's not a big deal. So if it's this far back,
Oh. It's facing the wrong way. Yeah. That works. So, we need to move all of these back one space. storage box. Probably should have taken a look at this before I started recording the episode. But we're just going to problem solve on the fly here. belts. Moving this all the way back. Replacing. This one's easy. We just need to remove these belts. No storage container involved. Okay, now I see why I had so many windows, because for some reason I... Man, I, I was really optimistic about making this work when I designed this outpost. Somehow I thought... <laughs> I think these actually need to be three windows. We can try that. I'm not sure it'll work, but we'll try it. We'll make both of these be three conveyor windows. Three. Okay. There's some clipping. I don't like that. What clearance? Oh. So, like, this idea will work. It's just not clean. But I'm not going to take the time to perfect it right now. I'll come back between episodes and just, just create a little more space to make it look better. Right now, we're just going to focus on, focus on getting these uh, components onto a train. So, fill this back up with copper wire. This will go to the far output, this to the middle output. Kind of a nightmarish on the, the upper floor, but you know, we'll make it work. Do I actually need two? Yeah, I only need one belt here. This we don't need this window. This can be a single window. It's gonna go away. This double will become a single. Let's 
single goes away. Okay, and now uh, we'll just mimic that on the top level. Single window, single, and then two triples. Oh, yikes. Okay, let's get our lifts back up. Save. Not a foundation, so it's great. Okay. Really need to pick up the pace here. Okay, so now we've got, well, we've, we're nearly there. Still need to connect a few things. We need to move our cable back. Hopefully it'll fit. Just barely. Okay, there's cable. We need to hook these back up. Beams. Let's just reclaim some of our inventory here. Oh, we're actually going to need six cars, is that right? Okay, one car for sheets, two cars, yep, we need four cars, no, no, okay, I'm crazy. Even though we've got two two lines here, we can still fit them in into one car, because we've got two inputs. So one, two, three, four for cables, and then a uh, fifth for ingots. Now we're transporting the copper ingots because we'll need them both to make quick wire using the alternate recipe and also uh, we'll need them in our aluminum outpost once we unlock tier 7. Whew. Man. Okay, these actually need to go up higher now that I'm considering it because they need to go over this train. Let's take a quick peek and just see what height we needed. Got a one, two, three, four, five. Okay, there's six. Six walls up.
Okay, good. I needed concrete. Two, three, four, five. Now the windows. I guess we actually kind of need those. Is this wrong too? Sure is. All right. So let's get our train station set up, just see how much space we'll need here. Okay, so this is going to be receiving B. Right now uh, it's just using the first car to pick up heavy frames. So we've got seven cars left to play with. So that'll be five cars for copper and two cars for oil, one for plastic, one for rubber. Let's try to place this appropriately. Now each train station segment is two foundations wide, so this will be train station. Well, let's just count it off. We'll need four stations for the for the train. That's eight. Uh, the first freight car is filled. That's ten. And then we'll need five more cars. That's ten. So, twenty total spaces. Okay, that would have the train in right about here. And I, I think that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. Well, actually, let's move it back to... Yeah, we'll move it back two more. Of course, all of my uh, supplies are still inside in those boxes. Okay. Let's go collect them. It's looking doubtful that we're going to get to the, the oil outpost in this episode, but we'll try. That's some stuff we can delete here. We don't need these ingots. <sighs> More ingots. At a later date, we'll need to add a hyper tube up to the roof here. So that I'm not constantly deconstructing a piece of glass ceiling. Now, let's get our train station down. Okay. 
the train is coming from uh, the west, so make sure that your station is... Uh, this is a problem. Even though the rail ends here, for some reason there's a collision there where, where it thinks that it, it extends much farther. But that's fine. We know that the the rail is centered in the foundation. Now we'll just center the rail in the foundation, take it right to the edge. There we go. Connect it. Three empty platforms for the three locomotives. An empty platform for the freight car that has heavy frames. And now five freight platforms. Three, four, five. Okay. Let's see how that lines up. Not bad. It's not great. Now if we could push it back a little bit farther, that'd be ideal. But we've only got like one foundation, and that's really not enough to, to bother with. So let's connect this rail. It's too short, of course it is. All right. It's already powered by virtue of being connected to the rail network. So let's rename it. Station 11, that's literally the most, you know, normal name I've seen. They're usually like in Swedish. This is going to be copper outgoing. Even though we've only got one station on this platform or on this outpost, you know, let's just keep the naming rules uh, intact. This is going to be receiving B. It's going to come to copper outgoing and then return to receiving B. Now we just need to do the same thing as we did on the limestone outpost and that's just to belt these over the tracks. We could actually go much lower here because there's not a train station. That just occurred to me. There's no reason to have them this high. Like this level would be fine. Right? Yeah. So let's do that. Using a door again. Having it shorter will mean less total walls to put up whenever I box all these off. Now, I think here it looks good. We'll leave ourselves enough room. windows, the big windows before. I'm not crazy about though that though. Let's use these multi pane windows.
right. So set up our conveyor lifts again. Oh, this is gonna be a nightmare. I just I really like to avoid the the three window walls whenever possible just because uh, it's it's almost impossible to avoid clipping when you use them. Apparently I didn't connect the cable. Like, I may be crazy, but it seems like some of the... Oh, it's just a level of detail issue, I see. I was going to say, it seems like the conveyor lifts were like changing color from what they have been for months, but just the level of detail when you're farther away. They appear to be... They like have different meshes or something, different textures. Okay. Well, I'm almost out of encased industrial beams. Oh, fortunately we're right next to the factory for encased industrial beams. Let's see if if the storage depot was full in the base. Oh, it's probably not. Yep. Still not full. So that means this is not full. I wonder what the issue is. Production's not very fast. I just may need to, to connect more of the the concrete uh, constructors to the power grid, or perhaps it's uh, just too far. Oh, man, not my day. Gonna run out of encased industrial beams again. <laughs> All right, if one extra. But this is probably a good good point to end the episode. Uh. We just need to connect these belts to these freight platforms. They're all set to load by default. And uh, then these components, the wire, the sheets, the cable, and the ingots, will be transported to the receiving B station in the storage hub. And then we can route those by a belt from the, the receiving station into industrial storage containers in the storage depot. Uh, and after that, we'll move on to connecting the 
the oil outposts, you know, getting our plastic and rubber transported to the storage hub. And then we're ready to start work on the electronics outpost, which is going to be an undertaking because there's a lot going on there. A lot of parts, a lot of machines, a lot of components being made and delivered and exported. So uh, thanks for watching. Uh, hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't, and I'll see everyone in the next episode.